Hi everyone, it's Miss King Crosby, and today we will begin Chapter 3 in our Properties and Materials Unit. This lesson is titled, Jess Makes Hair Gel. This is an exciting new chapter, and today I'll read aloud another one of our books. Activity 1, Introduction to Jess Makes Hair Gel. Remember, we've been working on designing a glue that meets the design goal of Must Be Sticky. We've been learning about new ingredients to get ready to start making our second glue. Today, we're gonna to read this book together, Jess Makes Hair Gel. What do you think this book may be about? And what clues did you use to make your prediction? It's okay if your predictions don't turn out to be correct. You can always revise them once you have more information. And remember, like engineers and scientists, Good readers use the clues to make predictions about what they think may read or learn. Jess Makes Hair Gel is a story about a boy who went through the design cycle to make a hair gel that met his design goals. The book may give us some ideas about planning our next steps in designing glue. Thinking about what we already know can help make predictions. What does hair gel do? Well, I know that it styles hair. And how would you describe hair gel? I remember putting some on my son's hair the other day and it felt gooey, kind of thick and sticky. And what is a property of good hair gel? Well, we're going to read the story and while we read it, you should think about your initial predictions and change them if you need to. Activity two, let's read Jess Makes Hair Gel. Jess Makes Hair Gel by Jacqueline Barber, illustrated by Masha Winborn. Jess wanted his hair to stand up in spikes. He wanted it to look shiny. He wanted it to look like his big brother's hair. Jess asked his mom to buy him hair gel, but she said no. So he decided to make some hair gel himself. He thought about what ingredients to use. What ingredient would make his hair look shiny? What ingredient would make his hair stand up in spikes? Jess looked in the bathroom. He looked for things that might make his hair look shiny and stand up in spikes. Here are the ingredients he chose to test. Shampoo, shaving cream. Jess looked in the kitchen. He found more ingredients to test. Egg whites, corn syrup, lime gelatin, a glue stick. He checked with his mom, then he decided to test those ingredients. Before Jess tested his ingredients, he wrote this in his notebook. Properties of good hair gel. Looks shiny, makes spikes. Jess knew that property is a science word. A property is something you can see, smell, hear, feel, or taste about an ingredient. A property can also be something an ingredient can do. Being able to make spikes is a property. So is mixing well with other ingredients. Jess tested each ingredient. After each test, he washed his hair. He put some shampoo on his hair. His hair looked shiny, but the spikes tipped over. The shampoo looked foamy. He put shaving cream on his hair. His hair didn't get shiny at all, but the shaving cream made pretty good spikes. The shaving cream looked very foamy. Jess put egg whites on his hair. His hair looked very shiny, but he couldn't make it spiky. The egg whites seemed too thick. Jess put corn syrup on his hair. It wasn't shiny at all, and it didn't make spikes. The corn syrup seemed too thin. Jess washed it out, to, out of his hair quickly. He didn't want ants to come and taste the sweet syrup. Jess put lime gelatin on his hair. It looked very shiny and it made really great spikes, but it was green and it smelled like lime. So let's pause there. What does Jess think the properties of a good hair gel are? Let's think about that. He said it looks shiny and makes spikes. Hmm, what would you want hair gel to do? I don't know about you, but hair gel, I would like it to be spiky too. Jess used a glue stick on his hair. It wasn't shiny at all, but you should have seen the spikes. When they dried, they were as sharp as spines. Jess recorded what he had learned so 
he would remember. He made a table in his notebook. He used science works he had learned in school. Instead of ingredients, Jess wrote substances. Substance is a word scientists use when they are talking about ingredients. Now Jess had some evidence to help him decide which substance worked best. He evaluated his evidence. Only lime gelatin made his hair shiny and spiky. But there were problems with the lime gelatin. Who wants green hair? Who wants it to smell like lime? Let's pause here. Why did Jess use a table like this to record what he found out about a substance? Well, I think that he used it to keep track of his information. And by looking at Jess's substance table, what ingredient worked best? Let's see. Shampoo, like shiny, yes. Mixed spikes, no. Notes, foamy. Mm, there's evidence there. But let's look down. Lime gelatin says, look shiny, yes. Mixed spikes, yes. The note said, green and smells like lime. But which ones didn't work at all? Well, I can see right there, corn syrup did not look shiny and did not make spikes. And the note said, too thin. Jess added some properties to his list. Here is what he wrote. Properties of good hair gel. Look shiny, make spikes, no color, no smell. Jess sat and thought. The lime gelatin was good in some ways. It had some of the properties of good hair gel. But Jess wanted his hair gel to have all the properties of good hair gel. He had more work to do. Then Jess had an idea. The lime gelatin that he had tested was green and smelled like lime. But plain gelatin has no color and no smell. Jess knew what to do. He looked in his kitchen and found it. Plain gelatin. Jess knew he needed to test plain gelatin. Here's the recipe Jess used. He found it on the back of the gelatin box. Jess's mom helped him use the microwave. Recipe for plain gelatin. What you need. One and a half teaspoons of gelatin powder. One cup of water. Bowl that can go in the microwave. Spoon. What to do. One, measure the ingredients. Two, mix the gelatin powder with the water in the bowl. Three, put the mixture in the microwave on high for one minute. Four, carefully take the mixture out of the microwave. Five, stir until you can't see the gelatin anymore. Careful, it may be hot. And six, chill the mixture for four hours. Just tested the plain gelatin on his hair. It seemed to work well. The next day, he wore his hair gel to school. All day, his hair looked shiny. It had spikes. His hair was the same color as always, and it didn't smell. Jess was really happy. His new hair gel worked. When Jess got home from school, he took out his notebook. He recorded what he learned. Jess's substance table too. Substance, lime gelatin, plain gelatin. Shiny, yes for both, makes spikes, yes for both. Color, well, lime gelatin was green and the plain gelatin was none. And for the smell, well, the lime gelatin smelled like lime and the plain gelatin had no smell. So looking on Jess's table, how is what Jess did to make hair gel like what an engineer would do? Well, we'll discuss this more at the end of the story. Jess closed his science notebook. He had done it. He thought about the properties of good hair gel. He tested different substances and recorded evidence about how well they worked. He evaluated the evidence. He tried again when some substances didn't work, and he recorded what he learned each time he tested a substance. In the end, he made a great hair gel. Jess smiled. He was already thinking about testing new toothpaste recipes. Here's a glossary. Again, a glossary is the bolded words in the story, and it tells us a definition. I hope you enjoy that story. Now let's move on to activity three, connecting to the design cycle. Did Jess have design goals? Well, yes, his list, properties of good hair gel, 
had his design goals. They were the properties he wanted his hair gel to have. He wanted the hair gel to make his hair look shiny and to stand up in spikes. What new design goals did Jess add when he figured out his hair gel had some properties he did not like? Well, he wanted his hair gel to have no color and no smell. And what did Jess do to make sure that the hair gel had the properties that he wanted? He learned about his ingredients, he made a plan, right? And he made his hair gel. He tested his hair gel. If his ingredients didn't work out the way he wanted, he went back and thought about other ingredients. How did Jess learn about, plan, make, and test his hair gel? Well, like Ambrose and Jellybean Engineer, Jess went through the design cycle. And did Jess follow the stages in the design cycle in order? Well, sort of. But when he tested the lime gelatin, he realized that his list of properties of good hair gel was incomplete. So he went back to the learn stage and added new properties to the list. When some ingredients don't work, Jess went back and thought about other ingredients. Each stage of the design cycle is important, but you don't always need to follow them in order. Engineers often have to revise their plans based on what they learn. Just like Jess added to his list of properties of good hair gel, we will be adding to our design goals list and continuing to investigate different ingredients. We'll come back to the design cycle as we continue to redesign our glue. Which brings us to activity four, reflecting on cause and effect. Engineers who design mixtures like hair gel and glue see what happens when they mix things. Cause is why something happened and effect is what happened. Looking closely at what happens helps engineers who design mixtures to better understand what is happening and what the next step should be. So what are some examples of cause and effect in just makes hair gel? Now let's think about that. Well, I remember that Jess's mom wouldn't buy him a hair gel, so he decided to try and mix it himself. And then Jess put shaving cream in his hair. His hair wasn't shiny, but it was spiky. And there's another one with lime gelatin, which made his hair shiny and spiky, but remember, it was also very green. And then plain gelatin made Jess's hair spiky and shiny, and it didn't turn his hair any color. Think back to what we've been doing to design glue. What are some examples of cause and effect in our glue design process? Well, we did add some water to each dry ingredient and made each one wetter. And then we also let the mixtures dry and then we look to see if the beans stuck to them. Well, why is it important to understand cause and effect when we design our glue mixtures? You have to know what effect a certain ingredient could have on your mixture. Salt, as we know, will cause your mixture to be rough and salty. Water may make your mixture too runny and flour will cause your mixture possibly to be strong. Wow, we've learned a lot today about cause and effect, especially reading about Jess and his hair gel. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I hope to see you next time. Bye.